looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Light on Living. I'm Light Coach Lisa, holistic nutritionist and life coach, helping to lighten the load of life's challenges. Now, today is such an interesting one. I mean, we're, we're actually going to cover, well, pretty much everything on the show, as we do with this special guest. Um, but, the, but the one fun thing that I'm going to, the word that I'm going to use today, and it is a big word because a lot of us have a little bit of a struggle with it, but it really shouldn't be, and it's focus. Now, I have a guest who's going to really, really bend your mind on how to focus and what to focus on, and it's probably not the things that you think you want to focus on, but let me share a little bit about this guest because we have had the pleasure of having him not once but twice and now three times on the show because he's got a big mission and he's doing it. So, and included in this little bio is, is his mission. So let me share this with you. It is the oh, amazing time ever, David Essel. Woo! <laughs> so, David, <laughs> hello, David. Um, I just want to share about, I'm going to read your bio here because everybody needs to know about you. And, and you know what? You could never squeeze everything into your bio. And I have to say that. So I'll, I'll just share with everybody. David Essel, MS, is a number one bestselling author of 10, like 10 books. He's a counselor, master life coach, international speaker, and radio host whose mission is to positively affect 2 million people or more every day. That's right. I, I, that's, that's the big one. <laughs> In every area of life, regardless of their current circumstances, celebrity Jenny McCarthy says, David Essel is a new leader of positive thinking movement. And yes, he is. <laughs> David's work of 38 years is also highly endorsed by the late Wayne Dyer. Chicken Soup for the sole author, Mark Victor Hansen, as well as many other celebrities and radio and television networks from around the world. He's a verified through Psychology Today as one of the top counselors and life coaches in the USA, and I verify that as well, <laughs> and is a ver verified relationship expert through marriage.com. David accepts new clients every week into his one-on-one -on -one programs from around the world, and I want to actually really, really put that one out there as well because um, I, I'm going to take this moment and opportunity to share when I met David, you know, over the phone and through the shows, um, it's some, he's somebody who, as soon as I, I spoke with him, I, I was changed. I was helped. And so I reached out, and I get his daily boost on my emails every day. So you guys got to sign up for that. We'll, t we'll tell you about that later. But it really is in every area of life because you don't really know what's holding you back until you focus. So welcome, David Ethel, to the show. <laughs> Lisa, it's so great to be back with you again. And and I love your energy, and I always do. Every time we're on, that's one of the things you and I connect with is the passion that we have for the work we do. So thank you for bringing me back on. Oh, gosh, thank you. And, you know, I was um, I was really excited to hear one thing, and I know it sounds like it's a weird thing to get excited about, but you you have your own show, but you, in fact, had to just put it on, on hold a little bit because you, you're doing other work that really needs your attention, and you'll be back for the show. But um, tell us all why you have, you know, needed to focus and not do the show right now. Yeah, gosh, for 27 years, Lisa, I hosted a nationally syndicated radio show and absolutely loved it. You know, it's how I met so many people that have been influential in my life, like the late Wayne Dyer and uh, Mark Victor Hansen and some of the people you mentioned, uh, um, Deepak Chopra. You know, so over 27 years of interviewing those type of people, I learned so much. I gained friendships. And then it came to a point, which is, you know, our latest book, Focus, Slay Your Goals, that I, I had so much going on that I wanted to start to pull back for two reasons. One, I wanted to have more personal time mm -hmm. because it's really easy to get sucked into the vortex of wanting to do more and more when you're in the world of help, helping people. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to have some more David Essel time. And, and then the other thing was that I wanted to start expanding. You know, we have, as you mentioned, a daily video boost, which is five days a week. I do videos that we send out to our subscribers. It's outrageously inexpensive for people to join. 
So I wanted to focus on that. Um, we wanted to focus on the new book, Focus, that we put out several months ago, and it went, already went number one bestseller. So we're really happy with that. Woo-hoo! And then I wanted to have – yeah, I know. It was so exciting, you know, and, and that was our 10th book. And, and then I wanted to have more time to start working on the 11th book, so what it came down to was me looking at all these different things that I'm doing, and the one thing that we knew we could take time off from and come back anytime we wanted was radio. So that's what we did. And, you know, and this is an important point for all of your listeners, is that when you want to improve your life, what we always say is that you've got to remove before you add. So. A lot of times people will say, you know, what I want to do is that, you know, I want to make, uh, you know, double my income. And so we say, okay, well, then the first step to double your income is to remove unnecessary expenses. Mm-hmm. Isn't that interesting? Because most people say, well, if you want to double your income, you've got to increase your income. And we say, well, that's step two. But mm-hmm. step one is let's take a look at all the expenses on a weekly basis that are unnecessary because so many of my clients in the past, Lisa, we teach this course called Financial Freedom Now. It's 10 weeks long. We have people from all over the world. Right now, I've got a guy from Australia who's going through it with me, another one from New Zealand who's going through it with me. And what they're always shocked about is that the first step of getting focused on your money is to get a real honest read of what we're spending on a daily and weekly basis and what percentage of those purchases are unnecessary. And so we want to remove the unnecessary expenses before we start worrying about increasing your income. And if, if, if you can follow this point, many people, when they start to decrease their expenses, well, what happens to the money they're making? It becomes more valuable. Right. So you might increase your income in step one by simply decreasing your expenses. Yeah. And all of a sudden, at the end of the month, where you used to have $100 left over to invest or $50 left over or a couple hundred dollars, at the end of the month, when you start removing unnecessary expenses, you may have several hundred, you may have $1,000 a month extra income just simply by removing before you add. You know, actually, David, what is, I'm thinking right away in my brain is a lot of people say they didn't do that step and they rush out and they they do, they increase their income. Guess what? If they don't realize those expenses, they're going to actually probably increase the expenses. So this is a, a foundational step. It's, it's helpful for getting to the step of making more money, too. Oh, exactly. And, and that's what we did. We said, OK, before I add one more thing to my list of the billion things we do every week to, <laughs> to inspire people, before I add anything else, I actually have to remove something. I have to yeah. subtract, you know. So, you know, there, there's a guy that I just started working with, and I know you're really big in weight loss. And, you know, he, he just had a stent uh, put in his heart. Um, mm-hmm. not a, I, I don't think he's older than 50 years old. He's probably got about 100 pounds to lose. Um, and, and when he came in, he said, okay, you know, like, what do I need to start doing differently? And I said, well, the very first thing we need to do after I looked at his blood lab reports, Mm -hmm. I said, we have to remove all sugar and all caffeine. Like, because you're you're struggling with high blood pressure, you obviously have cholesterol issues. You just had a stent put in your heart. Sugar is the number one inflammatory agent that you can put into your body. Yes. So, Sugar is a real culprit, and, you know, and, and there's a great book by a buddy of mine, Johnny Bowden. It's called The Great Cholesterol Myth, and it was written, um, Johnny and, and Dr. Sinatra um, actually wrote the book together, and Sinatra has been really famous in the world of alternative healing as an MD for years. And in their book, The Great Cholesterol Myth, they talk about it's not necessarily the yolks of the eggs that's going to build up cholesterol in the body. It's the combination of saturated fat plus simple carbohydrates like sugar because sugar is such an inflammatory agent that it helps the cholesterol to form in clumps because the arterial walls are already inflamed. They're the perfect placement for cholesterol. But it's not just the cholesterol in the eggs. It's the syrup. It's the crap, the sugar that we Mm -hmm. eat in the morning with the eggs that creates the problem. So this gentleman came in yesterday and he looked at me and he goes, that's all I have to do. 
And I said, well, let's see how easy it is. Sugar <laughs> addict. <laughs> you know, if, if you're, and he is, and he's an acknowledged sugar addict, and he's an acknowledged caffeine addict. I said, like, like, let's not load the boat too much. You know, yeah. let's get you successful by removing sugar and caffeine. And then we'll start looking at what to add to your diet. But, and, and Lisa, this is what focus is all about. This is what our new book is all about, you know, helping people get focused on the steps that are really difficult to take by removing stuff from your life before we add. Yeah, I'm right now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting so excited to continue, but I can think of every area of life. And what I'm, I'm feeling is that what you're saying, and I think maybe people can attach this to, to it, is focus on cleaning up. Because when you remove what's damaging, like that's the word damage is what's popping up to me. So whether it's in your finances or your health or your business, like imagine interviewing all these amazing people that you could be hiring for your company, but yet you've got three bad apples. And until you remove those three bad apples, those bad apples could spoil Everybody else, just like, you know, the sugar is going to damage, there's that word damage, the arteries, and yeah. then the cholesterol can sit in it. So, yes, it's like it's clean, focused on cleaning up. That's a great step. Oh, it is. You know, there's a, a woman that I've been working with now for about six weeks and married 15 years, and she found her husband in an emotional affair. Mm-hmm. And she found all these messages on his phone. Now, he had not had sex with this other woman yet. Uh, But as we know, and we've written so many articles about this, emotional affairs are just as damaging to a relationship Mm -hmm. as physical ones. Mm -hmm. So when when she found him and she came in, and of course all of her friends are saying divorce him immediately. He's been having this affair online for a year now with this woman, and you need to divorce him. And so will we say, well, wait wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You know, like what, what else is going on in here that we need to remove? So the very first thing, which she did, she set a boundary with him and said, if I find one more piece of correspondence with this woman, I will divorce you. Mm-hmm. And that's fair. You know, like yeah. I caught you in an affair. <clears throat> if, if it continues, I will divorce you. So then I said to her, okay, let's look at what factors you and your husband are participating in that are damaging to the relationship that could be one of the reasons that he actually reached out to another woman. Well, this shouldn't surprise people. She had shut him off for sex with sex for nine months. Oh, wow. They, they both have a tendency to drink too much. Mm. So what, what was the very first goal I gave her? I said, we need to remove. So the number one thing we're going to do is we're going to remove alcohol from your guy's existence and right there, Lisa, and for your listeners that may feel the same way, she looked at me and she said, how are we going to do that? Yeah, that's alcohol. a big one. It's a big one, right? And, and she said, alcohol is part, like, we go out with friends every Friday night and we drink. We yeah. will go out Saturdays or we'll stay in. But, you know, the focus is around having cocktails on the weekend and the 4th of July. You know, alcohol is one of the greatest disruptors of love relationships known to man. Yeah, I can't even so, believe that you attack, uh, get into this because that one, like, that is a, oh, let's throw it in. I mean, and some people live with zero alcohol in their lives, but it is such a lifestyle. It's such a worldly lifestyle thing. Like, I can't, like, I, I'm not an alcoholic, but I certainly have wine in my life. And I would like, ooh, I don't even know how I would do a zero, a zero tolerance. Well, I have to tell you, here's a, you know, a story that I've shared in, in the book prior to Focus. And actually, I bring it back in Focus, too. So for over 25 years, you know, I was a person that loved wine, loved alcohol. And, you know, every morning I get up, and and, and here's the thing, you know, I never got a DUI, Lisa. I was never late for an appointment. I mean, I've had my own business for almost 40 years. We continue to grow every year. Um, And and so, you know, there were times where I would wake up many mornings feeling slow, but I always, you know, scheduled my appointments so that I, I'm a person that works later into the evening. So my last session ends at nine o'clock every night. So as a counselor and a coach, you know, I work straight through nine o'clock, but a lot of times, especially sessions in person, I wouldn't start them until 11 or 12. And I would do a bunch of phone sessions with people from all over the world until then. I came to a point to realize that I was so dependent on having fun with my wine at night, having fun on weekends, on vacations, that it was going to be a problem to let it go. And then I knew that that's where my focus had to be. Wow. And so a number of years ago, I interviewed Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, 
who's oh. the founder of Transcendental Meditation. Um, and in 1996, 22 years ago, when he celebrated the 40th anniversary of Transcendental Meditation, or TM, his organization, Lisa, selected our radio show, our national radio show, as the only media outlet in the U.S. to celebrate 40 years of Transcendental Meditation. Oh, wow. So we freaked out. Like here, I'm going to be with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. I have been a practitioner of a Transcendental Meditation since 1988, and it's 1996, and I get one hour with this guru wow. of all gurus, you know? <gasps> wow. And, and here's something fascinating. During a break, he says to me, you are a big fan of affirmations and positive thinking. And I said, oh, my God, yes. And he said something very interesting. Your listeners need to pay attention to this. He said, are your affirmations your reality? Hmm. And I said, of course they are. And he said, do you know what I'm asking you? And I said, yeah. I said, you're asking me if I practice these affirmations on a daily basis and do I walk my talk he said that's not the question oh. he said the question is are your affirmations your reality and I sat there looking at him going what the hell is he saying right right <laughs> right, right I just answered it and and he goes I'll give you an example what's your what's one of your favorite affirmations that you say every morning I said oh this is an easy one I am David Essel a child of God, happy, healthy, and sober today. And he looks at me and he goes, okay, is that your reality in the physical world? Now, David, don't answer that. Don't answer that because they're going to squeeze in that commercial right now, and I want everybody to hang on to that very last word that you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. <laughs> okay, in two minutes. <laughs> The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Own Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Welcome back to The Cat Show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, and of course, companionship. Just look how she struts. It's like she owns the place. And see how she curls up and cuddles her person. The pitch on her purring is simply perfect. Nice one. Fantastic cat. But really the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Nico is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. and so lucky to be having David Essel on Light on Living here today with us. He's the number one best-selling author and counselor to like literally millions. So he left us off with a really, really, really important story. Um, I'm going to leave you off with that big question that you were asked. You were trying to figure, what the heck is he trying to say? And I'm going to let you take it from there. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, you know, a, a quick recap. I'm with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Uh, he's the founder of Transcendental Meditation, and that's it. And actually, TM was made famous by the Beatles, Lisa, uh, yes. in the late 50s, early 60s, 
They became devotees of Maharishi. They used his meditation technique. It radically changed all their lives. And then they started promoting him and the work all over the world. So, and he said on the show several times that, you know, the Beatles were great fans of his work and, and really did help him. So, you know, he had asked me my favorite affirmation and he asked me if it was my reality. And so he said, state your affirmation. And my affirmation was, I am David Essel, a child of God, happy, healthy, and sober today. And then he looked at me for the second time and said, okay, is that your reality? You know, are you David Essel? Are you a child of God? Are you sober every day? You know, because he wanted to know if this was the reality in, in my world. Mm-hmm. And Lisa, like many people in that situation, I lied. Oh, oh, dear. And I said, yes, it is my reality. Now, the first two points, I'm David Essel, I'm a child of God, those both were true. Mm-hmm. But the third point, I'm sober, was a lie. And I didn't have the strength to look at him and say, well, two mm-hmm. out of the three things I say are my reality. Mm-hmm. And, and it was fascinating because we got done with the interview. And three weeks later, I'm in Orlando, Florida, speaking at this massive conference. I get off stage. There's a line of people asking me questions. And at the very end, there's this tiny little woman patiently waiting. And I get to her and I said, I'm so sorry. It's taking me so long. Do you have a question? And she said, well, I have 20 minutes. I flew in today just to meet you and interview you. I have 20 minutes to interview you. And then I have to fly out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's go. So we went to this coffee shop. We're sitting talking. And I said, w- what magazine is this for? And she said, "Not there's there's no magazine. I oh. said, well, why are you interviewing me? She said, Maharishi sent me. <gasps> oh, my God. And I go, you're kidding me. And she goes, no, I've been with him 36 of his 40 years. And I listened to your interview with him, and it was stunning. But he wants to know. He sent me here to ask you one question. I said, oh, my God, what? And she said, he wants to know, what do you remember from the interview? And, you know, Lisa, it took me back. I said, you know, honestly, I I don't really remember that much. I don't have any specifics. I remember. I said, I go, he was incredible. He was amazing. She said, no, no, no. What's the one thing that you remember? And I said, you know what? The only thing I can answer that with is that he was filled with joy. He had a childlike wonder. He giggled and laughed throughout the whole interview. And she said, okay, I'm going to share something with you that you may not understand, you may not like to hear, but you will get it down the road if you don't get it now. And I said, what's that? She said, the reason that you remember joy and Maharishi's joy is because you don't have it right now. Oh. And Lisa, and then once it I know this is heavy. You know, it's really heavy. And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, with being with him for 36 years, there's a group of us that sit with him on a regular basis, and he will just lecture for hours on end. And when he's done, and we get together as a small group and talk afterwards, someone will say, man, I can't believe the depth that he talked about regarding self-love. And someone else will say, I don't remember that at all, but I do remember him talking about how to overcome blocks to inner peace and someone else would go, you know, those two topics don't resonate with me. But what I do remember, and she said, so David, whatever you remember is what's missing in your life. And so she said, this is what a profound teacher he is. He's triggering you to find out what's blocking your joy. Well, right away, Lisa, you know, being the, 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 the person that knew it all back then, Mm-hmm. I said to her, I go, well, you know what? This was a nice interview. I, I don't think we need to go any further. Oh I'm the number God. one best-selling author. I live on the beach. I do the work I love. I'm filled with joy. And I ended the interview. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> yep. And three weeks later, Tuesday afternoon, 2.30 in 1996, I woke up from another three-day binge. Oh. And I looked in the mirror Wow. And I said, David Essel, you have no joy. Oh, my God. I do fun. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah. And wow. so my my alcoholism was, and I heavily depended on it. Again, no DUIs, no loss of right. jobs, no blah, 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 right? Yeah. But, you know, I was I was an alcoholic. And I was highly functioning. You know, I traveled. I have a question. For, 
how come yeah. how come in your personal affirmation um it was even there that you were sober like w- w- had you dealt with it before no because oh. i knew there was an issue at one oh. level and i wanted to be sober oh so okay i fell into the trap and this is what we you know in our our, our not not the book focus that just came out but the book before that positive thinking will never change your life um, when that book mm-hmm. went number one, Lisa, it went number one because I shared that in our industry of personal growth, we've been fed a massive lie. Yeah. I mean a freaking massive lie. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts do not create things unless it's a miracle. <laughs> so. You can have all the affirmations you want. And I used to teach this crap, so I know it better than anyone. Yeah. I am a millionaire. I am a size 10. You're a size 20. I am a millionaire when you're earning 30000 a year. I am sober when you're not. See, we've been taught the biggest lie in the world through the law of attraction and books like The Secret that you can state some kind of fancy affirmations and it will become your reality because – Whatever you supposedly put out to this mythical thing called the universe (laughs) Mm -hmm. must come back in kind is what our teachers tell us. And it's a bunch of crap, Lisa. It's absolute nonsense. For 25 years, I had that affirmation. I am David Essel, a child of God, happy, healthy, and sober today. And I was a freaking alcoholic. But Mm -hmm. that affirmation kept me in denial, made me feel good momentarily, just like the person who says, I'm a size 10 when they're a size 20. When you're saying it, you feel powerful because that's what affirmations do. Right. But they also, you, I guess, they, they mask it because I could, um, you know, anybody, one point who wake up, say, I'm a millionaire, I'm a size 10, or they could say, I'm in a healthy relationship and they're not, or I love myself when they don't. Like, there's so many things that you could be saying yeah. you want them so badly, but you just, you want them and you want to experience it and feel it. And so in our newest book, Focus, Slay Your Goals, we actually teach people how to do affirmations that are authentic and real. And the way you do it is that you say, I am working seven days a week through groups, meetings, online courses, and books to remove alcohol from my life so that I will be happier and at peace. Okay. That's an authentic, real, honest affirmation. I have removed all sugar and convenience foods and fast foods from my diet as I work my way from a size 20 to a size 10. That is a powerful, honest affirmation as long as you're doing what you're stating, right? Right, right. You're, you're so, emphasizing this, the baby, not baby steps, but the steps that you're taking, yeah. those are huge steps um, that you're taking towards, like you have to take action. And, and so what we're saying to people is the reason that all this secret and the law of attraction is so attractive is because it demands no freaking effort at all. right. So you put your thoughts out into the universe. You know, I, I just wrote an article about the law of attraction. I've probably written about 30 of them. To, to oh, all right. right. <laughs> the, the law of attraction. I mean, I, we just destroy it. And I say, you know, like, what is the universe? Is it God? Is it a goddess? Is it the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain? Like, what the <laughs> hell is this thing called the, the universe, right? right now, right. I used to – and then here's something else for, for people that are listening that are irritated right now because they go, you know, who the hell is David Essel? <laughs> Yeah, I can feel that. <laughs> yeah. Right, like the secret. The secret has sold 20 million copies or some ridiculous right. amount. And 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 you know what we say is, listen, there's lots of like Hitler was adored by millions. He had to be in order for his evilness to reach the level that it did. Okay, yeah. it doesn't mean he was right because he was adored by millions. And it's the same thing with the secret and the law of attraction. And what those things tap into, Lisa, is what we defined in 1996 when I made my big turn from all this positive thinking ridiculousness is that we say there's something called human nature. And the definition of human nature is our desire to get the most out of life with minimal effort. Mm -hmm. And that's what drives 
that's what drives the sale of the secret and the law of attraction. They're not reality. You know. You know what? But, you know, I'm gonna ask you something because when you know, now I'm really gonna um, share some personal thoughts here. But when I hear that, and I actually agree, it, it act, when I meet. There are some people who really are driven and motivated, and they just really do want to serve or create and get out there. But they are totally people who have human nature and very strong of it. And they just say, oh, I just want to make lots of money so I can do nothing. And it actually, and I'm gonna, I don't know why it does it, but it actually upsets me. It, 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 I actually get a little angry, and it really bothers yeah. me. And I don't know why, because then I'm saying I'm getting angry with human nature. And I think, well, that's not very nice of me. But it's true. It actually upsets me. And I think, why do you just want to? Be selfish and waste your life, and then it. And I was like, ah. So I would can ask you, like, why do we? Why do some of us get so disappointed or hurt by human nature? Then, well, you know, our, the desire, and this is something that's innate in the human population. When we're raised, we are raised into the. For most of us, anyway, we're raised into the information of that I deserve. We have this entitlement, yeah. which is really sickening. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. I deserve a great body without doing any work. I deserve a lot of money because I'm what David Essel. Who cares? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I deserve a great love relationship. You know, even though I'm not willing to sh- and allow my partner to be right, even though I'm not willing to do the work to forgive people, I deserve a great relationship. No, I'll tell you what. Here's the truth, Lisa. The only things we deserve are those things we are willing to work our butt off for. Mm. That's it. End of statement. Just because you're a human being, you don't deserve anything other than what you're willing to work for. There are people like Michael Jordan, the former great basketball player, who was born with certain gifts. And he was entitled with certain athletic gifts. But he had to work his butt off to take those gifts and to turn them into something magical. Wayne Dyer. You know, Wayne, I have a great Mm. Wayne Dyer story, the late Wayne Dyer. So the very first time I interviewed him in 1991, I said to him, Wayne, you know, he was super successful already back then with book sales yeah. and everything. And, and I said to him, you know, and we were talking about positive thinking and affirmations back in 1991. And I said to him, how did you create such immense book sales? Was it via your positive thinking? Was it luck? Was it what? And he laughed and he said, I'm, I'm going to tell you something that most people don't know. My first book came out. And I was living in Detroit, and I went to the bookstores, and I'm very proud seeing my book there, my name there. And I go back the next week, and there's still the same number of books in these different bookstores. And I realized that if they don't sell, I'm not going to create the momentum I want to create for my business, and I'm not going to be able to help people if the books aren't selling. So, Lisa, he went from bookstore to bookstore in Detroit and bought every one of his own (gasps) books. Off the oh shelf. My, oh my gosh. And he created momentum. Oh, and then is, yeah. all of a sudden, his publisher is calling him, going, Wayne, this is amazing. In Detroit oh. alone, they can't keep your books on the shelf. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, wow. when, when, when people think of Wayne Dyer, who are listening to your show, and they think of this guy that you know, he's really laid back and he believes in the power of yeah. thought and the power of intention. I mean, he did, yeah. but he also worked his butt off and he invested yeah. in himself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even doing like what you're doing right now, you're doing a show with me. This is work. I mean, hey, we're having fun, but, uh, you know, we're, you're working, I'm working. And, and there's so many even music artists who have done that as well. They've got to buy their own albums, you know, and, and, and stuff. And that's, I love that you shared that because everybody can relate to that to say, even the way, even Wayne Dyer. So that. That's pretty incredible. Um, I I almost want to start into a new question, but I know that in three minutes we have a commercial, but I'm going to ask this anyway. What you had just said about um, relationships and people are, you know, if they don't want to do the work of forgiveness or do the work of saying something nice or do the work of, of stop yelling or things like that. Um, and I, I'm bringing this up because my mom was in pain all of her life, and so she was taking medication, and that made her really not nice. And and not, not that she wasn't nice, but, you know, when she was under the influence, let's say. And it, I often find it, how does the other person on the other end, like my father, who would have to go that he was ever forgiving, my goodness, and he just was always understanding. So that was great. But I don't know that I could have done that. You know, I just, I, whose work is it? I guess it's both. It, it, that's my question, I guess. So when people are under the, it's not their fault, quote unquote. When they're under the influence? 
Yeah. Like when you were, dr- let's say when you were drinking and you were, if you were extra nice, some people are really nice when they're drinking. Some people are not nice when they're drinking. But mm. when when they're doing, say they're, they're drinking and then they now believe what they're taking medication or they're doing, they're addicted to um, a working out or something and that's making them a certain way, but then they have to stop doing that. Are they maybe afraid of how they'll be without that crutch or something? Oh, my God. I think for most of us that rely heavily on nicotine or drugs yeah, or alcohol. caffeine or sugar. You know, sugar, oh, my Lord. It, you know, the responsibility, let's go back to what we talked oh. about at the beginning. When you want to focus on improving your life, step number one is what do I need to remove? Mm-hmm. And step number one is usually the hardest step in the world. You know, any of your listeners that really have a, a, a dependency or addiction on sugar, when you try to take that away from them or you try to take alcohol away or nicotine away from someone, like you will see them go into pits mm-hmm. of despair, anger, resentment, rage that you yeah. never could believe would come. You know, like this couple that I'm working with where I said to the woman whose husband was in an emotional affair, you guys got to give up alcohol. Well, she's, you know, the very first day she was in here, she goes, oh, my God, you are so right. Do you know I've worked with her now for four weeks, and they are both struggling hard to mm. let it go. Wow. You know? Wow. And, but I, I told her, I go, you guys will never know if you can save your marriage if you keep drinking. And these, and these are two people that get up every day at 530. They go to work. You know, they're functioning drinkers, right? They're functioning yeah. low-level alcoholics. But in a relationship, alcohol numbs emotions, and then when you're pissed off, alcohol elevates emotions. Right. Yes. All these things that we depend on, you know, and this is a great stop to kind of uh, like point about talking about dependencies on everything um, because we'll have 10 seconds before commercials. But um, when we do come back, because we are so lucky to have David Essel here to share with us about this. He's not only been through it, but he's literally coached like millions. So come back and listen to us some more when we find out a few more steps of this, how to focus thing (laughs) and change your life. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg roll showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. I'm here getting through these commercials listening. I had another hour with David Essel right now. He is the number one best-selling author of 10 books, but 
the most important thing is he's written the books on things that can literally help you become more alive in every area of your life. And that's something that Wayne Dyer said. And I mean, lots of people have said because it's true. And we're talking about how to, how to focus. That's the name of the book. You've got to get this book focus. Um, oh, David, what's the t- tagline there? It's slaying something. What is it? Ah! Oh, yeah. The, the, the full title of the book is Focus, Slay Your Goals, The Proven Guide to Huge Success, A Powerful Attitude, and Profound Love. Oh, wow. and, and, Lisa, people can get it at Amazon.com, or they can go simply to our website, which is really easy to remember, TalkDavid.com, <laughs> T-A-L-K-David.com, and they can grab the book there. You know, um, my friend, celebrity Jenny McCarthy, wrote the foreword to the book. You know, she is one of the coolest women, one of the smartest, one of the funniest women I've ever met in my mm-hmm. life. And when when she said she was willing to write the forward, I mean, my heart <gasps> exploded because I love her so much. Yeah, and, and she actually and she, says that you are the new leader of positive thinking movement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she came out a couple years ago when our other number one bestseller, Positive Thinking Will Never Change Your Life. She read that book, had me on the show. And right after the show, she sent this outrageous endorsement that you just said that David Essel was a new leader of the positive thinking movement. And, you know, Lisa, and how that happened was I was on her show, and Jenny used to be a huge fan of the secret and the law of attraction and affirmations and all this stuff. And, and we had a, I, when she invited me the first time on the show, she goes, all right, David, I read your book. I'm blown away. Explain to the audience why and how we've been duped by all yeah. this stuff about the universe and, and you know, the, the, the power of affirmations. And, you know, by having her on the show, or having me on the show and explain it to her audience, that's at the end of it, she said, and that's why I call you the new leader mm-hmm. of the positive thinking movement, because so much of what we've been taught is fantastical illusion thinking. Now, mm-hmm. And now that doesn't mean, Lisa, that I'm not. I, I, every morning I do affirmations, but I do realistic ones. Yeah. Every morning I visualize myself, but I visualize myself. I don't visualize myself with 20 homes in Fiji. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I, I visualize myself. You know, in the next step. What's the mm-hmm. next step for me? Like yeah. that's so I visualize myself finishing the next book. Something that I'm already working at, not something. Yes, I, to, I love this little right? leak that you're doing right now. Yes, what's the next one? <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, and the, oh, the next one is a trip. The next one is the number one secret to successful relationships and friendships. Aww. And I and we're going thing. to we're gonna and and we're gonna do the same thing we did with our new book, Focus Slay Your Goals, is that we're gonna teach you what you need to remove first in order to get that incredible love relationship or a great friendship. But, but you know, um, when, when, when Jenny decided to write the forward for the new book and, you know, and she made this, this huge proclamation, at first people thought, well, gosh, you know, is David Essel and Jenny McCarthy, do they hate affirmations and positive thinking? And we mm-hmm. go, no. You, you, you know, I, I mean, I love this stuff, but we have to get real. And here's something really important, Lisa. From Deepak Chopra to Wayne Dyer to Susie Orman, who is a, 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 just a huge, huge part of my past existence with her on my show constantly. You know, all these people that, that we've interviewed, Harv Ecker, author of Secrets mm-hmm. of the Millionaire Mind, um, you know, there's not one of them, Lisa, that has ever said to me that they accomplished their huge goals by putting thoughts out to the universe and the universe responded to their thoughts. Right. No one has ever said that, you know, mm-hmm. and, and because we know it's not true unless a miracle happens. And so what I want your listeners to do is I want your listeners to stay optimistic, to be filled with hope, to work your tail off, to yeah. stop avoiding the issues that you know you need to face. Is it your anger? Is it your insecurity? Is it your sugar? Is it your alcohol? Is it your low confidence, low self-esteem? What are you avoiding? Because when you face fear head on, you're going to be amazed at how uncomfortable it is in the beginning, but how quickly you can walk through your dependency on sugar, nicotine, alcohol, the need to be right, how you can walk through codependency, saying yes to everyone instead of saying no when you want to say no. Like in the beginning, change is scary. But once you start that process, listen, I've been sober for a long time. 
and I will tell you this, and this is the God's honest truth. I had to put 365 days in a row working really hard to, to, to really get to that level of sobriety. Wow. Ever since I did that, Lisa, I go to weddings. I perform weddings. I perform funerals. I go to parties. I never think about having a drink. There are people around me partying, having a blast. I'm having a blast with them. <laughs> yes, the I can imagine. First, <laughs> <laughs> and the next day, I'm feeling great, you know? Like, um, yes. But, but it took a complete year of really working hard. And in our books, we have stories, you know, oh, my God, in the, in the, in the book, Focus, Slay Your Goals, there's, I talk about one of my great friends, Evelyn Keeling, who lost 240 pounds. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Now, listen to this. We tell the complete story in the book, Focus, Slay Your Goals. She lost 240 pounds in her 40s and in her 50s became a bodybuilder. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. Love this story already. <laughs> it is so cool. And, the, and, the, and, and part of the snippet I'll give away here on the radio is that <laughs> when, when she walked on stage in her first competition in Las Vegas, there were 15,000 screaming fans. Oh, my God. Because as she walked out on stage, on the far right hand of the stage was this massive poster of her 240 pounds heavier. Oh my goodness! Oh. You know, and and so what did she? What was her first step? Her first step was removing crap food. That was yeah, her, step number one. Her affirmation at that time wasn't, I am a bodybuilder. I am the strongest woman in the world. I'm the most muscular. No, it was, I'm working on removing the crap out of my diet. Exactly. You know, and then after she did that, her second thing was to face her fear. Now, listen to this. When she went into her first athletic club to begin an exercise program, she had to be wheeled in. She was too heavy to walk. She could not walk, so they wheeled her in, and they set her up on a treadmill so she had the rails to hold on to. Oh, my gosh. So this her second step was to remove her fear of being judged by others. Oh, oh that's a big right? step. I'm so proud of her. And what an inspir- – oh, my gosh, this is incredible. <gasps> oh, and, and, you know, and then in the book, we, we have other stories, you know, of, uh, for people that have focused and slayed their goals. Angela is a great story. She had a high school education. She was working in a bank, making minimum wage. You know, she, everyone had told her that that's the highest she could ever go. I worked with her for 90 days straight. Every morning, she would get up and call me at 4.30 her time. She lived on the West Coast of the U.S. I live in right. Florida. Mm-hmm. Every morning, five days a week, she'd call me for a 15-minute session, Lisa. Wow. And every evening, I had given her two hours of homework every oh. evening for 90 days. Oh, my God. Two hours? Okay, so Holy doodle. Two hours. Okay. <laughs> she had to redo resumes. She had to reach out and network she had, because she wanted to increase her income. Oh. 90 days past our very first session – she got a job offer at double her income, oh. and she never, ever looked back. And what did she have to remove? She had to remove the fear of rejection mm-hmm. in asking people to help her find a high-paying job. Oh, wow. Oh, fear of rejection. Oh, my God, fear of judgment. You have hit all of these right now that everybody's feeling. Um, and and you, you just mentioned something, that you worked with her for 90 days. And it's just a 15-minute yep. call in the morning. Now you've got to, they've got to do the work. They've got to do the work at nighttime or whenever it is, but meaning like it's a consistent, it's a committed, it's in everything. Is that how people work with you? Because I do know that you have a sweepstakes going on. And I would want to ask you if you'd share that with everybody. What is that, and is that a way that people can work with you possibly? Yeah, Lisa, we have so many different programs of people working with me one-on-one. You know, um, She wanted, like, and and with her, the 15 minutes, five days a week was what she could afford, right? She was making minimal money. She she did, but she wanted to get started and she was committed. So some people work with me daily. Some people work with me once a week for an hour. 
you know, we do it with people. I mentioned New Zealand and Australia from all over the world via Skype and phone. So if they go to talkdavid.com, they can look at the little link that says work with David, and there's like a box and different options to work with me. Okay. Um, and then you mentioned the Swedish things. Well, we've got two huge things coming up. Ooh. One right now that if your listeners go and go to the website, they can sign up for the sweepstakes. We're giving away $6,000 worth of counseling and coaching programs. Wow. So, and there's going to be over 600 winners, like 300 people oh are, going to, are going to, yeah, you know what? You, you mentioned earlier about how you get the daily boost video. Every yes, day. I love it. Yeah. I, and so we're going to have 300 people win the daily boost for free. They're going to get that video every day, five days a week. We have 300 winners that are going to get our brand new online video course called Focus, Slay Your Goals. Okay. And then we have several people that are going to win one-on-one -on -one phone sessions with me, counseling sessions with me. So wow. go to talkdavid.com, sign up for the $6,000 sweepstakes, and you could win one of many prizes. We're very excited about that. And then the other thing, Lisa, you had mentioned at the top, you know, that you're a life coach as well. Yeah. And in, in just a couple of weeks, we're doing a uh, a life coach certification weekend level one. Ooh, okay. And people can join us in person or via teleconference to go through the level one certification, which is August 18th and 19th. It's nine in the morning Eastern to six at night Eastern both days. And they can find out more information about taking the first step to become a certified life coach. And all of this, the sweepstakes and information on the life coach certification weekend is at talkdavid.com. Now, I thank you for sharing all that. And something I just want to bring up, you know, I actually became a life coach. Um, it was 2007. And I'll tell you, everybody listening right now, I only became a life coach because I'd actually signed up to work with a life coach because I needed coaching. I needed, I needed relationship coaching at the time. And um, it, I loved it so much. And I learned, um, like I was being coached so well and I was having such transformative things in my life, like all areas of my life actually got better, that my coach came to me and said, you should be a coach. You're really good at this. And so I said, I want to be a coach now because not only does it help me in my life, because as we learn uh, to how to help others, we're learning ourselves. So sometimes even like taking a life coaching course to become certified is actually so helpful for your own life. And so I just wanted to highlight that. Oh, Lisa, I'm so glad you said that. Do you know that now this is going to sound interesting. We, we, we've we been certi certifying people as coaches since 1996. 50% of people that take level one life coach certification weekend do it to improve their own lives. They're not interested in becoming life coaches, but they want to get the jump start on how to yes. change themselves, right? Yeah, it's so a how. 50% yeah. of people that take our life coach level one certification do it because they really just want to learn more about their own psychology, their own behaviors why they return to unhealthy habits. And through the weekend workshop, it's very intense. You know, it's nine to six mm -hmm. both days. Yeah. You will get the education of a lifetime. And then 50% of the people on that weekend will go on to take level two and three and to become a certified master life coach. And then they can actually work for you. <laughs> <laughs> that and is you know so what? great. I, I am my number one client, I'll tell you that, because every day, and I love that you said the daily thing. I love the daily thing uh, with yours, um, and my, because every day when we get that look, you know what? You can, it doesn't hurt to ever have that positive or somebody, you just feel supported, and you feel like you're not the only one, and you feel like you get set on the right track first thing in the morning, whether it's your five minutes of a boost or your 15 minutes of writing, doing whatever that is. But it is such a great jump start. So we have two minutes. That's it. I've got two minutes left with you. I'm freaking out. Um, is there is there one <laughs> quick little story, quick little anything that you'd like to share in, oh, my gosh, we got a minute and a half. That's it, David. i got a minute and a half. Whatever you'd like to say is all yours. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So first of all, 90% of what you'd like to accomplish listening to this show is possible. 10% of what you want to accomplish is illusion, fantastical thinking. You know, if, you're, if you want to earn a million dollars a year, that's $80,000 a month. There's very few of us, Lisa, in all reality that have the gifts and tools that we can verify earning 80000 a month. But there are millions of people that we have taken 
from $30,000 a year to $80,000 to $100,000 and more. And so whatever your dream is, write it down and look and ask yourself, is this realistic? 90% of the time, the answer is going to be yes. I don't care how long you've struggled with sugar, alcohol, nicotine, drugs, relationships. These type of things you have 100% chance of success for. So get excited. Understand that 90% of your goals are achievable. And then the next thing is ask yourself this question. What do I need to remove regarding money, my body, relationships before I try to add? And if you can work with a counselor, a coach, a minister to help you start off removing those bad habits, those bad belief systems, Lisa, 90% of what you want, you can have. I love that. That's absolutely perfect and the best thing. I, and what, wow, I feel, I feel like 90%. That's like, a, that's a given. I love it. So everybody, please check out David Essel, talkdavid.com. It's David Essel. You've got to go check anything. There's definitely help for everybody there on any level. And I want to thank you so much for being a part of the show. I love, love, love having you on. Oh, Lisa, it's always a blast. <laughs> and whenever I can be back with you, please ask and we will say yes. Oh. I love being with you. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm going to go write a new goal for myself right now and find out what the number one thing is I need to remove from my life so that I can achieve it. Thank you so much. Until next week, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Bye, David. Bye, Lisa. Bye.